What's going on guys? Back with another video. Another day that I'm just finishing up work. Today, I think I'm heading over to Mark's house to watch the UNC game. I really hope UNC loses. Alright, got to Mark's house. I'm gonna go inside, watch some good basketball, enjoy some good company, and I'll see you guys after where I give my breakdown and analysis of the game I just watched. And I really, really hope UNC loses. So just got back home from Mark's. Whew, that was an exciting basketball game. So I just wanted to give kind of my thoughts on the game. I don't watch basketball as like a fan would per se. It doesn't really matter who I'm watching. I watch it from a very analytical point of view, which can make it kind of tough to watch basketball games with me. The guys I was watching with are pretty good. They kind of saw the game the same way that I did. So we had a good time. Before I start like really going in depth about players and the teams, just know that I haven't been able to watch as much basketball as I would like this winter. So I'm going off a very small sample size. So just know that before I start my review. So for Oregon, Oregon's main player, Dylan Brooks, who is the Pac-12 player of the year. To be perfectly honest, he did not impress me very much. And I get it, this could be a very small sample size. I've seen him play a few times in the tournament. He just seems that he's he's a very much a prototypical volume scorer. So what that means is he needs a lot of shots and if he gets going, then he's very tough to stop. But he can get very inefficient very quickly. I believe I saw that he either in the tournament or in the season he was shooting around 40% from the field, which isn't a great number for a score. Tyler Dorsey though is a guy who can really shoot the ball. I think they said a stat he was shooting like 65% from three in the tournament. And I think he was about two for three or three for four, somewhere around that in the game. So he, he kept up that average. He got his eighth straight game with 20 points or more. That is a very impressive stat, seeing as most of those, all of those would have came in playoff games. One of the guys I'm most excited to see from Oregon over the next couple of years though, is their point guard, Peyton Pritchard. He's a small white guy. He starts as a freshman, which is pretty unbelievable. And I think there's a lot of potential for him to become a very, very good college player. In this game in particular, he got in foul trouble. I think that really threw off his rhythm though. He started off the game really, really well and then picked up two quick fouls, had to sit about 10 minutes and then picked up another one right before the half. So I think he kind of played the whole second half out of rhythm, trying to find his footwork, not trying to foul by trying to stay in the game. And unfortunately for, uh, what's his name? I think his name's Jordan Bell. Unfortunately for Jordan Bell, what he will be remembered for in this game was the fact that he missed two crucial box outs down the stretch. Now, I understand the first one was a little bit of a mental lapse, which I'm not giving him a pass on, but it happens in the game of basketball. He thought that Meeks had made the free throw, so he was walking to take the ball out of bounds. Ends up that he misses it, the guy back taps it. I can understand that. What's inexcusable though is the second time I understand Kenny Meeks is a big body. I do. He is a big boy. But you have to at least try to push, put a body on him. And I don't think he did a good enough job of that. Kenny Meeks secures the rebound. Game over. Speaking of Kenny Meeks, that boy is a beast. <laughs> but seriously, I know Oregon was lacking size. Chris Boucher was out. But Kenny Meeks looked like a man amongst boys out there. I think he finished with like 25 points and 14, 15 rebounds, somewhere there. And there were big points down the stretch. Kenny Meeks has been a fantastic player for UNC throughout his career. And, and even as a Duke fan, I can respect the fact that what he did in this game to get his team to the final. The other guy that really stood out for UNC, and this goes without saying, was Justin Jackson. My gosh. It seemed like he could score kind of however he wanted to. He hit a bunch of threes, a couple big ones. His float game, strong. Mid-range game, solid. And he finished a few times at the rim. To me, I love when guys stick around in college and they go to the league polished and ready to go. I think whatever team drafts Justin Jackson, I think they'll have a great chance of having in a year or two, a guy could really come off the bench, get buckets, and who knows? 
what he might be coming to. The rest of UNC actually seemed like they struggled. Barry wasn't great. Britt wasn't fantastic. So they really relied on Justin Jackson and Kennedy Meeks, which I think will be very interesting because as far as I know, Gonzaga matches up pretty well with those positions. I know they got the big Polish dude, Karnowski. Yeah, that'll be an interesting match to see him and Kennedy Meeks go up again. Those two are two units. What I'm interested to see in the final is the battle of the two star players, Justin Jackson from UNC and Williams Goss from Gonzaga. I think in big games, your star has to play well to have a chance. That being said, big games also seem to be the place where that fourth guy on the roster comes up and has a really big game. So I'd be interested to see who that'd be for each team. Anyways, if you made it this far in the video, please leave a like. Let me know who you guys got in the final in the comment section down below. Hit the subscribe button if you're new around here. Until next time, peace.